after three days and 24 hours of solid running for these Formula One cars, the pack down has started. We're going to be back here for the first race next week. Number crunching is beginning. The debriefs are still going on. And here are my testing takeaways for 2024. So it's the third year of this set of regulations. And the first thing to say is all the cars are year on year looking much better at testing here. I've been trackside from 2022 to 2024 now. And year on year, I'm seeing that the cars are looking more stable. Drivers want a nice settled rear end and they're getting that even from the word go really. Typically you'd see one or two teams really struggling, particularly on the dusty track or the higher winds that you can sometimes get in Bahrain. From the word go, everyone looked like they were in a much better place. There were loads of happy drivers, but of course, if everyone's moving up, then there's still gonna be some people unhappy by qualifying time next Friday because the pecking order is just getting more and more competitive and uh, happy times now, but you've gotta be moving with the flow and it's gonna be a development race all the way through. A lot of that stability and, and decent starts comes because it's been evolution once again, rather than revolution. The rules are the same and the cars have been tweaked and adapted and largely they've been tweaked to follow the dominant RB19 that we saw last year. There's been a few innovations here or there. The Mercedes front wing is uh, causing a bit of a stir in the pit lane, for example, but nothing has been causing more of a stir than the RB20. Now this one, when it was launched last week, looked quite spectacular. The tiny shrunken side pods, the tiny uh, inlets for cooling as well, with a big undercut underneath. Looked like it could be similar-ish style to the Zero Pod concept from the Mercedes a couple of years ago. Was it a risk? Was it going to be a bit of magic? Well, it looks like it could be magic. And the car, as soon as it was sat down, was looking pretty decent. And once again, the team didn't want to rest on their laurels, didn't want everyone to be playing catch up. They've moved the goal on. And again, we've seen some innovation on the grid. The other thing that's been overridingly apparent this week is the amount of curbs that drivers are able to take now, getting into places where track limits really shouldn't be an issue, like the entrance to turn four, the entrance to turn 11, but they're abusing everything. The compliance of these cars looks to be a step forward. The downforce level seems to be a step forward, and it means they can turn in from the concrete part, the, the curbs, whatever it is. It's not unsettling the cars globally. In, uh, in testing and once the track grip comes up and these areas get rubbered in we're going to see more of that I'm sure not only in Bahrain but all the way through the season and in Bahrain it caused a couple of red flags this week with drain covers being uh, being picked up we've seen it in the past at some of the street circuits and permanent circuits but with cars crawling over the curbs in more and more abusive fashion is that going to be something that the teams are going to have to watch out for this year so they're the main headlines from the week but what you all really want to know is a pecking order heading into race one here next weekend. And it's always tough to tell, you know, the testing mitigations are in force once again. We don't know fuel loads, we don't know engine modes. It's a hunch, but here it is. Haas, I think, will be at the back of the field for the start. Ayo Komatsu is team principal now, taking over from Gunter Steiner. The drivers are unchanged, as is everyone. But they've been playing things down for, uh, for the whole of the winter period. They bought big upgrades to Austin last year, trying to get that championship position. It didn't work out. It's delayed the development. And they think they're going to be missing out. The car doesn't look particularly lively. Hulkenberg had some brilliant qualifyings here in the past, including last year. I'd be surprised if they can replicate it. They might be playing the long game this year. I'm going to put Kick Sauber in at ninth position. And this maybe feels a bit harsh because They've had a good test, they've done some good mileage, the car looks very decent, it looks settled on the rear end, it has done for a while, but I'm not sure if it's got the overall downforce. They've had some headline times, particularly at the end of day three, but they are also a team that historically tend to run a little bit lighter on fuel load in testing, and I wonder if that was the case again, particularly on what looked to be a glory run at the end of day three for them. The car looks good, but like I said, I think the whole field has moved on, so having a good car and a better car isn't enough to guarantee yourself a better place. It'll be tight there, but I'm going to go with Kick Sauber. And they're pretty interchangeable with Williams, who I had high expectations for. They delayed the shakedown of their car. They got onto track here just before the first day, uh, trying to maximize the design process with, again, big expectations and big hopes with James Vowles in charge for his first full winter. But when the car got onto track, I still saw some of the inherent faults that they were trying to eradicate. It's still quite quick in a straight line, which has been a Williams trait the whole way through. It will make them competitive in certain tracks, your Monzas, your Spas, where Alex Albon will be elbows out, I'm quite sure, trying to cling on to some points. But they're still very sensitive to wind. They're going to be maybe a little bit erratic. And the rear end, which is the holy grail for the baseline of a good car, 
Looks like it's a little bit unstable as well. Logan Sargent was the big spinner on day two this week as well. So Williams, eighth, and I think they're a little bit disappointed with how their week went as well. In at seven, I'm going to go with Alpine. Very, very under the radar. Once again this year, Alpine in testing. Difficult to get a gauge. I don't think they ever did too much with uh, an angle of performance. They ran a very heavy car for two days. Both drivers got a load of mileage in. And the team, once again, changing concept, moving towards that RB19 design, but saying that they're going to need a bit of time to develop, as a lot of the guys further back will need to, moving in their, in their concept over the winter. Alpine, I'm not sure they're going to be doing enough to move forward. I think they're going to be at best just holding on to their sixth place with more teams getting competitive. Maybe I'm wrong. Enstone guys know how to make a good car, but I'm not sure they're in as good a position as they were this time last year. The RB team are going to be next up for me. Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda still at the helm, but it's changed all the way behind the scenes. Peter Bay has come in, Laura Mekias has come in as well as team principal, and they've got a closer allegiance with Red Bull. They've now got some components from Red Bull as well, and I think they've had a decent winter. They upgraded well through last season, and I imagine that both of those drivers are going to be looking to be getting points straight away in that tight midfield pack once again. The car looked good had a settled rear end, Daniel Ricciardo lighting it up on the first day, Yuki Tsunoda having a good run on soft tyres later on. This was a team that last year was right towards the back and struggling. They went through four drivers. This time, they got a bit of stability and I think they're going to be more of a force towards the front. The next pack is really, really tight and it's the same pack really as last season. In fifth, I'm going to go with Aston Martin who have had a very decent test. Fernando Alonso was in the car in the first morning and it was looking more like the Fernando Alonso that was here last year rather than the Fernando Alonso that ended the season in Abu Dhabi. The car looked good, the traction once again was looking very good and he was able to place it exactly where he wanted from pretty much the word go, racking up the most laps on the first morning. They developed it, as everyone did, quite nicely through the three days. They're right there in the field, and Fernando did a really strong race run, which was already his big strength this time last year in Bahrain on a rear limited circuit. I think that strength will remain. What I don't know about Aston Martin is how they're going to fare in the high-speed corners, because there aren't really too many around this circuit. So I think they've made good progress, but the bigger test for them are going to be on some of the faster tracks where they were a little bit weaker last time. Now, there was much talk about Mercedes at the launch with their new front wing, with the cockpit moving further back, suiting Lewis Hamilton, who has been looking for that for a full 12 months. But I didn't see an absolute progress in terms of one lap pace from the car. The car looked a little bit nervous on the first two days. They didn't seem to have great stability through the mid corner, which is something that they also had problems with for the last two years. Uh, the Downforce, no doubt, will be there. I think they've got good scope to improve the car. They've got a much better base than they had last year, but I'm worried that their one lap pace to start the season won't be as competitive as some of their rivals. The race pace, though, looked pretty handy for both drivers, George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. They are happy with where they're at. They're definitely in a much better place. They've got room to develop through the season with the concept that they've gone for, but are they going to be qualifying well enough? I'm not sure next week. I'm going to put them fourth. And really the opposite might be true for McLaren, who I'm going to stick in third. Started the test really well. Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri racking up some mileage on day one. The car looked very quick straight out the box. They weren't too aggressive with their tyre choice. They didn't have any of the softer compounds of tyre to throw on. They were very methodical, running through their test programme rigorously, waiting whilst others got the early mileage in. Then they went out and again, the car hit the track and looked very nice straight away. Remember, this is a team that had such a big development curve last year. Obviously, they're in a better place than they were here last year because that was pretty bad. What they want to do is get to a position where either of their so far Grand Prix winless drivers can take one this year. I think they might do that, but what concerns me is that race running. Oscar Piastri got in the car this afternoon and didn't do the most complete race run, had quite a lot of degradation, which was his Achilles heel. He showed so much one lap pace, but the race running wasn't great. That looked the same, and the problem was Lando Norris didn't do a race simulation run. A bit of reliability concerns for McLaren. Many only did 20 laps today. Didn't get a race run yesterday afternoon either. So that's a question mark for me at McLaren. I think their qualifying pace will be really good, but how is the race pace? And we know how crucial that can be. Ferrari could just be clear of those others in second place for me. They've had a brilliant test once again, picking up from the form that they showed at the end of last year, where they were actually the fastest qualifiers at the end of 2023. The qualifying pace still looks really good. Headline times for Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, but maybe flattered by tyre choice on days two and three. But the car ran reliably, 
and it looks way more consistent than it was this time last year and potentially the race pace looks better as well. What they've done is managed to get a more consistent car through a range of your angles so it's going to be less sensitive to wind and the downforce they've added looks to be pretty good as well so the rear end settled but it can get a good front end in as well and that's what Charles Leclerc particularly has been after for the last year. I think Ferrari looked good. Is the race pace going to be good enough to take on Red Bull? Is the qualifying pace going to be actually good enough to take on Red Bull at the start of the season? I'm not quite sure but I think they're in a better position than they were this time 12 months ago and I think they can have good hope for optimism through the year. So in at number one, of course, it's Red Bull once again. And this shouldn't be a big surprise considering the margin they had last year. But given the car they had, it could have gone either way. When you saw the launch, saw how radical they'd gone with that design, thought, is that a mistake? Is it a step too far? Or is it going to be some magic? It looks like it's some magic, particularly in the hands of Max Verstappen. The car looked hooked up on day one. The rear end looks good, but he's got that really sharp front end that Max likes. I think Max looks more comfortable in the car out of the box than Checo. And I think he is going to be the big favorite once again for the race next week, maybe to extend that winning run from 2023 straight into 2024. But it's a long season and all of this could be up in the air by summertime. Who knows?